Hello friends, welcome to my channel Myself Parag Jambulkar. In this video, we will see for each loop in Lightning Web Components. In previous video, we have seen how to implement conditional statement in Lightning Web Components. In this video, we will see how to implement for each loop. So see, for any programming language, two things are very important. One is conditional statement and another is looping statement. So see, uh, if we take C or C++ language or Java language, so how conditional statements are implemented so for that we have if if else or else if right and how looping statements are implemented for that we have for while do while right so for any programming language to write code or to implement any logic two things are very important one is conditional statements another is looping statement so how to implement conditional statements in lightning web components that already we have seen in previous video in this video, we will see how to implement for each loop. Now see, in the previous video, we have seen to implement conditional statements or conditional control structure. So in that case, we have used some templates, right? We have used if colon true, we have used if colon false. So if colon true, if colon false. These are the directives which are used to implement conditional statements, right? In the same way, to implement for each loop in Lightning Web Components, we have to use two templates or two template directives. So see, one is for each and another is for item. So one directive for colon each and another directive is for colon item. These two template directives we have to use to implement for each loop in LWC or Lightning Web Component. Now see what do we have for each loop? So see, it is just similar to for each loop that we use in C++ language or Java language. So see, we have multiple iterations. We have loop. In each iteration, one record we fetch, right? One iteration, one record. Second iteration, second record. Third iteration, third record, right? We go iteration by iteration. We have loop, right? So same logic. What are the logic that we use in C++ language? What are the logic that we use in Java language? Same logic for, for each loop we will use in LWC, Lightning Wave Component. Logic is same. Only syntaxes will be different, right? Same logic we have to use, but only syntax will be different. And how to implement for each loop in Lightning Web Components? In this video, we will see. I will take very simple example. And by that simple example, I will try to explain how to use for each loop. So see, we'll start from the scratch. I have opened VS Code. Now see, in previous video, we have created this component, right? Conditional rendering. And before that, we have created hello world component, right? Now see, we'll start from the scratch. In this video, we'll create new component. So see, I have selected LWC. Now I will right click on this. Here we have option, create lightning wave component. We will click on it. We will give some name. So for example, see, I am giving name for each loop, something like this. Enter. It is asking directory. So we will keep it default. Okay, so see, we have created this component, right, for each loop, and by default, we have three files, HTML file, JavaScript file, and meta.xml file, right, okay. Now see, in JavaScript file, so see, this is your JavaScript file, within this curly bracket, we write logic, right. Now see, in one of our previous video, we have seen how to write code for object. So, one simple example, see, this is one object, and here, we write, code for the object. For example, see, f name colon, suppose I am taking one example, parag, comma, yal name colon, jambulkar, comma, age, suppose 35. So see, these are strings, but 35 is an integer, right? Okay, so we can use any data type city colon pune right so see in this example what we have done we have created one record right this is one object that is one record only right and how we can access this object in html file so see this is our html file right so how we can access this object in this html file so how we can access employee.f name employee.l name employee.age employee.city right so likewise we can access this object values in this html code right now see so this is one object means one record but suppose 
we want multiple records together we want multiple records together so object is not sufficient right so for that we require one list so for example see i am creating one list something like this is equal to now see we are creating list so we have to enclose it by rectangular bracket right so see so within this rectangular bracket here we have to write code for this list now see so this is one record right so i am copying from this object so this is one record right now see second record and suppose one more i will add this is our third record right so within this list we have added three records so what we will do we will change values otherwise in every record we will have same value so see here i will change mayur So one is suppose I am changing here instead of Pune. Suppose I am adding Jalga. Okay. Third record also I will change Yogesh. Surname I will mention Hange. Age something I will mention and city I will add Nashik. Something like this. Right. Now see this is object. Right, one record. Right, it is one record only. And how we can access value in HTML file? Employee dot f name, employee dot l name, employee dot age, employee dot city. So likewise, we can access values, properties from this object in HTML file. Right. But now we have list, and in list we have multiple record. This is one record. This is second record, and this is third record. Right. So we have created multiple records in this list. Now see, we want to access these records in our HTML file. So for that purpose, we have to take help of for each loop, and for that we have to take help of these directives, template directives, for colon is for colon item. So how to use it? Now we will see. Okay. So we will. So see, here is a dot. Right. In every video, I am telling this because you should know whether our code is saved or not. Okay, so see this is dot me. It is not saved now. I am pressing Control Yes. That means our video is saved, right? Now see, we will write code for HTML file. Okay, so see, we will use Lightning Card like this. Okay. Now see, here we have to use template directives, right? So we will use template tag like this, right? Now see, what we want to use. These templates are these template directives for colon is for colon item, right? So see, we will write here for colon each is equal to in curly bracket. Here we have to mention list. So what is our list name? Employee list, right? This is our list name, right? Now see, so from this list we are fetching records, right? Now see one more thing or one more template directive that we have to use for colon item is equal to here we have to mention one variable. So suppose I am writing EMP something like this, right? So see for colon item here I am mentioning EMP and here I have mentioned list. Now what is the meaning of this? See we are fetching records from this list, right? So first record will be in this variable. In second iteration, second record will be in this variable. In third iteration, third record will be in this variable. In fourth iteration, fourth record. Fifth iteration, fifth record. Right? So iteration by iteration, we will have records in this variable. Right? Now see, we want to print those records here. So see, in curly bracket, here we will write emp dot f name. Then second. EMP dot L name again third value EMP dot is then fourth EMP dot city. So see when we are using for colon each directive. So see this will be the first record given by this variable, and for that we are using this directive 
for colon item right so in first iteration first record in second iteration we will have second record in third iteration we will have third record right so in this way for each loop is implemented in lwc okay so see i am saving this by control yes okay now one more thing one more important thing we have to update this meta.xml file right so see here we will make it true so already we have seen why we have to make it true we want to use this component as a standalone component not dependent on another component that's why we have to make it true and here we have to mention targets okay and here we have to mention target uh, for example lightning app page then uh, we'll mention target lightning underscore home page so where we can use our component in app page or our home page right okay now see i have saved code now we will deploy this so i am selecting this i will right click on this deploy source to org okay so deploy source to all successfully ran okay okay so here i have logged in in salesforce developer org so from this app launcher i am opening service app so already we have added this conditional rendering app right so in previous video we have seen that okay now we will add our new component so scroll down so here we have our component see for each loop okay so what are the custom component that we have created so here you can find now see this is our for each loop component right so see anywhere we can drag it so see support uh, here we'll keep so here we have added right now we will save it we will click on back button so here you can see see this is our first record right then from mayur chavan this is second record right from yogesh anke that is third record right so all records we have fetched by using for each loop but see this output is not looking good right so what we will do we will print this output in table okay so see we will add table into our code so see so here we will add table so for that we will add table tag this closing table tag will put here okay now see here we will add t head tag so see for lwc compulsorily we have to add t head tag or t body tag okay so see within this t head tag here we will add tr tag that is our table row right and here we will add td tag so see first name so basically we are giving heading then td last name then we will add age and we will add one more city so this row indicates heading right now see how to add this data into table so see again what we have to do here we have to make one row so for that we will use tr tag this closing tr tag here we will put right now see uh, it is giving some error so see missing key for element tr inside of iterator elements within iterators must have unique computed key value right so for tr tag it is very compulsory to add key we have to add unique key right so see very simple how to add unique key here for tr tag we have to use one attribute key is equal to now see in curly brackets we have to mention so see something like this emp dot and some id we will mention okay so this will be key this will be unique key emp dot id okay so any variable you can use so here i have mentioned emp dot id it will act as a key okay now see these other values we will mention in td tag here also we will mention td tag 
okay what are the problems that we have in our code so it will be shown by this problems tab just here we have to click and those problems will be shown here so in our code we don't have any errors so that's why it is showing no problems have been detected in the workspace and all are saved right there is no dot symbol right so that means our code is saved okay now we will deploy it for this loop right click on it deploy source to org okay deploy source to org successfully ran we'll refresh it one more time we will refresh because it will take time so see now it is showing data in table so it is more user friendly right instead of showing data in one or two lines we can show data in table so showing data in table is more user friendly right now see we will add one border so see how we can add border to this table so here table we can make border is equal to one right so see we will save this again we will deploy it again we will refresh it one more time we will refresh okay so now we can see okay this table have border right here instead of this border what we can do we can use predefined classes those are provided by the cell force so see class is equal to here so see slds dash table so slds dash table this is predefined class given by the cell force one more class we will use slds dash table underscore border now see here what do you mean by slds it stands for cell force lightning design system Okay, cell force lightning design system. So on Google, you can search cell force lightning design system. So there you will get link, and from that link you can find out all the classes those are provided by the cell force. Okay, so these predefined classes we can use in our HTML code. Okay, so now I am saving it. Okay, so again we will deploy and we will see how it look. Okay, deployment done. Show. We will refresh our code. one more time we will refresh so here you can see table is shown differently by using cell force classes right predefined classes so by this also we can show our table so in this way we can use for each loop in lwc right for that we have to use two template directives one is for colon each and another is for colon item for colon each here we have to mention list and for for colon item here we have to mention one variable so by simple example i have explained how to implement for each loop in lwc so friends i hope you like this video if as yes, then click on like subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press bell icon so that you will get notification of my next video so stay connected thank you